hello and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Back to tonight. I have no doubt that this story will be very popular with all you budding space travellers out there, all you lovers of small, cute, furry animals, and most of all, I think it will be a huge hit with my fellow Cheese fans. In this captivating tale by Alicia, we learn once and for all the answer to a question that loomed large in my childhood, perhaps yours too. What is the moon really made of? Or, more specifically, is the moon really made of cheese? Before we find out, let's get into bed and start relaxing our bodies, ready to lie still and listen. Try wriggling around a bit to find your comfy spot. Stretch out your legs, your feet, point your toes for a few seconds and wriggle your fingers. And now, let everything go floppy. Take some nice, deep breaths in and out. Another one, in and out. And now snuggle down a little bit more. Great. Now you're ready. It's time for me to begin Mice on the Moon by Alicia Ainsley. Mice are known for three things. One, they are tiny and fluffy. Two, they speak with the most adorable high-pitched voices. And three, they love cheese. And no mice love cheese more than Morty the mouse and his family. Morty was married to Martha and together they had nine children. With so many little mouths to feed, Morty had to go out and work very hard to provide for his family, whilst Martha stayed at home and looked after the children. They were an excellent partnership, and as their little ones grew up, they became a great big team. Morty had spent his whole life working diligently, around the clock, to build a comfortable life for his family. When he had first started out, he was swiping fallen pieces of food off the ground of human houses to take home to feed his little ones. But as the years went on, with plenty of graft, smart thinking and quick wit, Morty eventually opened his own shop. It wasn't just any shop. It was a cheese shop. Morty, Martha and their children learned how to make their very own cheese and served it up on the counter of their little shop for other animals to buy each day. At first, business was booming, and everybody wanted a taste of the amazing smelly cheese that they created. They offered cheeses such as Gouda and Brie, Cheddar, Edam, Camembert and Blue Cheese, just to name a few. Whatever people wanted, Morty, Martha and their family could whip it up in next to no time. However, as time went on, the other animals started to grow bored of cheese and the number of customers walking through Morty's shop door dwindled by the day. On one particularly quiet day in the shop, Martha counted up the cash in the register and Morty leant across the glass counter and sighed. I don't think we've had one customer yet today, he sighed disappointedly. Martha Mouse continued rifling through the cash in the register and counted up what they had. We have barely made any money this week, she confirmed defeatedly. Nobody appreciates cheese anymore like they used to. Morty and Martha glanced behind them at their nine children, sitting together in the back room. Their oldest child, Maggie, was teaching her little brothers and sisters a science lesson, like she did every Friday afternoon. Once the children were old enough, they took turns to help teach their siblings about different subjects 
and they all learnt together. Today, Maggie was teaching them all about outer space. She pointed to a large diagram that she had drawn on the whiteboard as she spoke. Her younger siblings all gasped with delight as she taught them all about the different planets and stars that float in space, millions of miles away. Morty and Martha smiled with pride and turned back to face their empty shop floor. How will we feed our children if we can't earn enough money? Martha whispered to Morty. We have lots of cheese to feed ourselves with right now, but when the money dries up, we will have no way to buy our ingredients anymore. Then we will be in a tricky place. Morty twirled his whiskers and thought hard. There had to be a way that they could keep their shop open and keep food on their table without the worry of running out of cheese. Morty looked back at his nine sweet children, so eager to learn and so enthralled by the notion of space. He would do anything for them. Then, suddenly, a light bulb switched on inside Morty's head, and he had a thought. As Maggie pointed to the moon on her class diagram, Morty recalled a myth that he had heard as a little boy. When he was younger, Morty's parents would tell him bedtime stories all about the moon and how it was made of the most delicious cheese. It was said that if you took a big bite out of the moon, then you would taste the most scrumptious cheese you have ever tasted. You can even see the moon's cheesy exterior from planet Earth. If you take a telescope and point it directly at the moon and then zoom in close, you can see the holes in the moon's crater, just like you find in a block of Swiss cheese. Morty had many pleasant dreams as a child, where he walked on the moon and ate cheese, all day, every day. As far as Morty was aware, Nobody had ever been to the moon to prove that this theory was correct, but maybe it was time somebody did. Morty, Martha and their nine children woke up early every morning to make as much cheese as they could for the day in the shop. But wouldn't it be nice if the hard work was already done for them? Morty thought if they could get to the moon, and pack up as much cheese as possible. Then they would have enough cheese to keep the shop running and the family fed for years to come. It's time for a little adventure, Morty decided to himself. In his limited spare time, Morty started to plan his ambitious mission. His plan was to build a tiny rocket ship with the help of his big family and fly up to the moon to see if it was, in fact, made of cheese. Then, if the stories were true, they would pack up as much cheese as possible into their rocket ship and fly it back down to Earth to sell. It was a simple plan, in theory, but nothing is ever as easy as it first seems. To begin with, Morty had to convince his wife, Martha, that it was a good plan. At first, she was not impressed with his idea, and she thought that Morty had gone mad. You can't be serious, she cried, taken aback by Morty's suggestion. Mice don't go to the moon, Morty, and even if they did, they'd be sorely disappointed by the lack of cheese when they landed. You are bonkers. Despite his wife's protests, Morty still believed that it was worth a try. They would never know if the moon was truly made of cheese, unless somebody went there to find out. The next problem was rather a big one. If Morty and his family were going to build a rocket ship big enough for all of them, then they would have a lot of work on their hands 
and a lot of studying to do. But in true mouse fashion, they all worked together fantastically to put the plan into action. Maggie Mouse, their oldest daughter, started teaching the rest of the children lessons in space travel so they could learn what it took to send a rocket up into space. The second oldest child, Marley, started leading lessons in carpentry to teach them all the skills that they would need to fix up a rocket ship. Then, the third oldest child, Murray, led art and design lessons, in which they all had a go at designing the perfect rocket ship to send them up into space. After some time of learning and planning, the Mouse family felt ready to embark upon the next important step. In order to build their rocket, they needed lots of large, strong materials to form the walls of their ship. By working together, they managed to find scraps of metal to create the outside walls and little chairs from children's dolls' houses to be their flight seats inside the ship. They discovered an old piece of a milk bottle that would act as their window to see outside into space and they compiled lots of matches to fire up the rocket with. Once they had all of the pieces they needed, the family worked together every night when their shop was closed to build the rocket. They hammered in nails, superglued walls, and expertly pieced the scrap together to make a rather impressive ship, large enough for the mouse family all to travel into space together. To complete their masterpiece, they painted the outside of the rocket bright purple with three yellow stripes around the fins at the back. For a bit of fun, they painted the pointed nose at the front of the ship with a white nose and some yellow whiskers. They named their rocket ship Apollo Fromage and painted the name on the side in big white letters. Their rocket ship was finally finished. Are we going to the moon now, Daddy? Their youngest mouse, Maddie, asked with delight as they all stood back to admire their finished masterpiece. Morty smiled with wide, excited eyes and replied, Yes, yes we are. But first... We need to close up our shop here on Earth before we begin the journey. So the big family of mice closed up their beloved shop and donated the remaining cheese to their friends. Then they piled through the door of their rocket ship and sat down in their seats. There were eleven of them travelling in total and they all had their own individual seat belts attached to each of their tiny chairs. The children all buckled into the back, and Morty and Martha sat up front in the driver's seats. Martha plotted their course to the moon and prepared the engines for liftoff. Are you sure about this? she whispered to Morty still a little unsure as to whether he was crazy or simply adventurous. He placed his little mouse hand on top of hers and whispered back, I've never been more sure. She smiled and grew with confidence at her husband's reassurance. She looked over her shoulder and into the back of the rocket ship, where her nine children all sat patiently waiting, and shouted, Are you ready? They all began whooping and cheering with joy, begging for her to set off. As Martha revved up the engines, Morty looked out of the window and down at the ground, where their other mouse friends all watched on with intrigue. He waved down to them, and they waved back. Two of his good friends held up a banner which said, Bon Voyage, in big red letters. 
and Martha's best friend waved her off with a waft of her lace handkerchief. Everybody was so impressed by the family's efforts, and they were all inspired by their brave mission. Who knew? Maybe, one day, the other mice would join them on the moon too. The rocket ship suddenly began to rumble and shake as the engines switched on and everybody sat back in their seats. Martha flicked a switch and pressed a button and the countdown began. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. The rocket began to shoot up into the air, and the mice left behind on the earth began to cheer. Morty, Martha, and their children all squealed with enjoyment as the rocket raced through the sky, pushed past the clouds, beyond the Earth's atmosphere, and into the dark expanse of space. As the rocket ship left the Earth's field of gravity, it felt like the vehicle had slowed down, and they were now floating in slow motion. Can we take off our seatbelts yet? Maggie, the oldest child, asked eagerly. Yes, you can, Martha agreed, but be careful you don't all bump into each other. The children didn't need to be told twice, and they all unbuckled their seatbelts at the same time. As they did, their little fluffy bodies began to lift and bob around the rocket ship. They couldn't keep their feet on the ground, and they all swam through the air as if they were swimming through water. Wow, this is incredible, Murray, their arty child, exclaimed as he spun around in midair. Are we flying? Little Maddie questioned, confused but exhilarated by what was happening. Sort of, replied Maggie, ever the intelligent one. There is no gravity in space, so there is no gravity pulling us down to the floor like there is on Earth, which means we can float around in space and feel like we are flying. The children were all delighted by their new ability, and despite their mother's instructions, they all moved around the space, bumping into one another and causing quite a cacophony of chaos on board the ship. Morty and Martha kept their eyes firmly on what was outside of their window as they directed the rocket through space and towards the moon. It was unbelievable that they were all in outer space. Everything that they could see now was almost close enough to touch. And yet, they had spent all of their life on Earth, gazing up at the stars and the planets, knowing that they were far out of reach. They had never thought in their wildest dreams that they would be the first mice to go to space. They could see the big ball of light that is the sun shining so brightly that they couldn't look at it for too long. The sun was so enormous that it dwarfed every other planet and star in its solar system. They could see Venus and Mercury on the way to the sun, and Mars wasn't too far behind them. But the planets were not what they had come all this way for. In fact, their journey was going to be a lot shorter, as the moon was quite close to the earth. Their journey only took a small amount of time, in the grand scheme of things, as they hurtled through space with great grace and ease, eventually landing their rocket ship 
on the surface of the moon. As soon as they touched down on the moon, the children all floated gently back down to the ground and dashed over to the window to look outside. There was nothing to be seen except for lots and lots of deserted land and the dark sky above them. Far away, they could see the earth spinning on its axis, going about its day just like normal. Are we getting out now, Daddy? Little Marcel asked, prodding at his father's shoulder. Morty took a deep breath and gulped. Now was the moment of truth. They were about to find out if the moon was actually made of cheese, and whether this whole mission had been worth it. The family of eleven all piled out of the rocket ship and set foot on the moon. The ground felt slightly squidgy beneath their feet, and with each footstep they bounced and boinged a little as they moved. Morty sniffed the air and noted that there was a slight sweet pungency that permeated their surroundings. But it was like nothing he had smelt before. It didn't smell like cheese, that was for sure. As Morty took in the sight of the barren moon, he started to think that his plan had been all for nothing. This didn't look like the cheese that he knew. Perhaps it was just a myth after all. The moon wasn't really made of cheese. Martha noticed that Morty seemed disappointed, so she attempted to lift his spirits. Should we try a bit of the moon then? She asked teasingly. I know you've been wanting to find out for a while what moon cheese tastes like. Their nine children all gathered around, eagerly waiting for their father to take the first bite out of the moon. Morty pulled his cheese knife from his pocket and sliced a bit off the corner of a hole in the moon's surface. He held the slice out in front of him and inspected it. It was a grey colour, not yellow or orange like the cheeses he knew back on earth. It also smelt of the same sweet tangy aroma he had noticed earlier. But it did feel soft in his hand. Morty took a deep breath, placed the slice of the moon into his mouth and began to chew. To his delight, his taste buds lit up with the taste of a familiar flavour. The surface of the moon was indeed made of cheese. It might have been a grey colour, and it might have smelt unusual, but it was undeniable. As soon as the slice of the moon had hit his tongue, He had recognised it as delicious cheese. In fact, this cheese tasted better than any he had had before. It's cheese, Morty declared, and the family all began to cheer. They all began to pick chunks out of the ground and ate up lots and lots of moon cheese. They all agreed that it was the best tasting cheese they had ever tasted. Morty couldn't wait to share it with everyone on earth back in their shop. The Mouse family spent the next few days enjoying their time on the moon. They slept under the stars and played joyously across the face of the moon, hopping from place to place aided by the moon's weak gravity. In fact, I bet if you got a telescope, 
focused on the moon and zoomed in, you would probably have been able to spot eleven tiny mice running across the moon's face as you prepared for bed at night. They all ate moon cheese until they were full, and then continued to sleep and play until they were ready to devour more. It was a perfect existence. After a few days of fun on the moon, Morty started to slice up big chunks of moon cheese and began loading them onto their rocket ship. What are you doing? His wife, Martha, questioned as she saw him working away. What do you think? He said. I am packing up the ship with moon cheese to take back to Earth to sell in our shop. That was always the plan, remember? Martha nodded her head in realisation. She had forgotten all about their plan. She was having such a nice time on the moon with her family that she had forgotten that they were supposed to go home eventually. I don't want to go home, she confessed sadly. I like it here on the moon. I want to stay. Morty gave her a hug and chuckled. We can't stay on the moon, Martha, he replied. Who would we sell the cheese to? There's nobody here. Martha sulked and shrugged her shoulders before suggesting, Maybe we wouldn't need to sell the cheese to anyone. Look around. There's plenty of cheese for us to eat and we'd never have to do any work again. It's all here, ready for us. Morty looked around them at the moon that they had currently called home. It was totally idyllic. They had endless amounts of cheese at their disposal, and the children were all loving playing all day, whilst Martha and Morty relaxed. They hadn't relaxed like this in a very, very long time. Morty was starting to come around to the idea of staying on the moon, but then he caught himself. It could get very lonely up here, without any friends or anybody else to talk to. Eventually, they'd all get bored and wish that they had jobs to do. Besides, Morty missed his cheese shop. He missed all of the animals that he got to meet every day as he served them, and he loved sharing his passion and knowledge about cheese with his customers. Just then, they heard a jumble of voices calling out from behind one of the hills. They turned to follow the sound and saw their nine children running over the hilltop towards them, chatting animatedly. Mummy, Daddy, little Maddie called out. You'll never guess what. We found other creatures on the moon. Then her brother, Marcel, added, And they're really nice. Morty and Martha were shocked. They didn't think that anybody else lived on the moon. They hadn't seen anyone else since they arrived. This was wonderful news. The children had been exploring and ventured into one of the caves on the surface of the moon. When they delved deep into the cave, they came to the entrance to an underground city where lots of other moon creatures lived. The children eagerly led the way back to the place where they made this remarkable discovery and guided their parents underground. Just like they had said, there was a thriving city underneath the surface of the moon. And even more amazingly, the moon creatures looked very familiar. The moon creatures were small, fluffy mice. 
Many years ago, a family of mice must have migrated, just like them, to the moon, but decided to stay. They all had pointy whiskers and twitchy noses, with big, round ears. Although, there were two main differences between the moon mice and Morty and his family of earth mice. One was that the moon mice had bright orange fur from lots of time basking close to the sun in outer space. And two, they had big wide feet with hooked toes that could cling on to the moon's surface with ease. This way they didn't bounce around and float through space too much. The moon mice were so welcoming to Morty and his family, and with this friendly community now on the moon, Morty felt inclined to stay, much to the delight of his family. Morty and Martha set up their new cheese shop on the moon and used their amazing skills to create lots of new recipes that the moon mice had never tried before. They used the moon